Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Marsha, I'm feeling okay. My throat was hurting when I woke up, but I'm okay now. I think it might just be allergies. I don't know. All of us have kind of had like the sniffles and the, um, the sniffles and the stuffy noses. So maybe it's allergies. It's coming home from the beach artist. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Good morning. I know, Charity. Look at me wide awake. Charity had one job and that was to wake me up at five and Charity didn't do that. Guess who texted who? I texted Charity. And I was like, 5 a.m. club turned into 547 club. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. And I was like, you didn't text me. I told you to text me. Good morning. Y'all, I got something that I want to talk about this morning. And it's going to be so good. Good morning. We've missed you too. Listen, watch this. I am almost done with my cup of coffee, and oh, no. I was about to take a drink. Oh. But I literally left it for y'all to be able to do this, so I guess it's okay. Um, Steven! Y'all <laughs> <laughs> were, oh, I can't get it, though. I'm kind of stuck at the time. Man! Uh, Let me grab it. Yeah. I need another cup now. I was going to take the last sip, but the bug got to it first. I was not going to knock the bell. <laughs> like, she meant to get me the bell. The bell's behind me. I love it. I thought about revamping our Bible journaling mug and, like, making it a coffee talk mug. I don't know. Pretty cool, though. Our first cup of coffee was very good. I definitely miss coffee. Um, Pop wasn't as as good as I thought it would be, honestly. Like, Mountain Dew isn't. I'm actually drinking water over the Mountain Dew. Like, last night, I could have grabbed Mountain Dew uh, while I was going to bed and studying all this. But I grabbed water instead. Can I help you? Can you curl your hair? Um, you need to brush your hair first. But as long as Daddy had... Be in there with you. Okay. Good morning. Up at five now. We ready for workout. Um, no, not yet. One thing at a time. One thing at a time, friends. One thing at a time. Good morning. This morning, we're going to be in Genesis 3. I got some really good stuff, and I got some things to share with y'all. And um, it's going to be mind-blowing. And honestly, this is another one that is, we're going to talk about our children. And this is just all-around confirmation for me. And this is just a study that I had last night. I was getting ready to go to bed, and then all of a sudden, um, I just started running across things, and I was like, oh my gosh, all this is so good. So good to the point I couldn't write it. There was too much on my mind, so I had to type it all out, which is why it's printed. Um, if you mean, like, do I feel better as in, like, healthier? Most definitely. Most definitely. Yes, we did just start. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 3. And we're going to read a little bit, but I have some really cool things to share with you guys today. Really cool confirmation things for me. Um, but also, this is going to be really eye-opening for you this morning. Um, it's going to be really good. Oh, listen. That is so sweet. Stop it. That is so sweet. Baby, wait a minute, you feel so special, but happy birthday. I hope you have the best day. Susan, this is, uh, I would say no, uh, but this is for every 
parent. I mean, we all need this message right here. Um, that we're about to talk about. All right, you guys. All right, so Genesis chapter 3. Let's go ahead and read, okay? And then I'm going to get in to my notes that are going to be so good. So Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast in the field that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the tree of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the servant said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and the tree was desired to make one wise, she took its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. The eyes of both were open and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves linen cloths. Okay, you think, Kelsey, why are we reading that this morning? Just bear with me. This is all going to make sense, okay? So, why are we reading that this morning? Um, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for a minute, and I want to ask you a couple of questions. If your child come to you, for the sake of you being in the room with me, can I use you? Okay. And y'all answer for yourselves. Okay? Y'all answer for yourselves, and you can put it in the comments, but Angie's right here, so I'm going to ask her. If your child came up to you and said, who created God? What's going to be your question? What's going to be your answer? He's always been. How has he always been? And it's okay not to know the answers, because that's the whole point. He's always been. They say, how has he always been? That don't make sense. What do you mean? Well... He's the creator, or so he has always been in existence from even before the beginning of time as we know it, and that's where our faith comes in. Okay, having faith in the God that we don't know the, the origin from. Okay, all right. So, my guess God is good, and there was nothing before him. Okay, all right. Next question. Um. When, let's see, what was the ones I asked Steve last night? Um, oh, man. What's the other ones? What is the other ones? Hold on. There's three questions. Um, how do you know who God is? Or, you know, when did he exist? And then there's other ones that kids ask us. So, how do you know the flood is real? How do you know the flood absolutely happened? Well, from one, the Bible tells me the so. Okay. And but the whole point is how do we know the Bible is true? Okay. Well, they have found remnants of the ark on mm -hmm. the mountain where it landed. Okay. Um, for the sake of asking more questions, me asking you those questions, how did it make you feel? I'm prepared. I'm perfect. Oh, gosh, this is going to be good. Oh, because you just, yes. Okay, so you felt unprepared to be asked those questions, yeah. right? Like, not don't feel good, okay? Right. All right, question. You were raised in church all your life, okay? Right? Yeah. Like, you were, you right. loved it. Okay, did they ever answer these questions? No. It's did, always because the Bible says so. Right, Okay. Now, when I ask you those questions, does that feel like a good enough answer? Because the Bible says so. No. No. Okay. This is the whole point. Watch this. And just be prepared, my friends. The enemy isn't going to like this one. So, just don't even watch the comments, okay? Because the enemy isn't going to like this one. I already knew last night that I was going to be under attack for teaching you guys these things. So, I already knew that. So, just keep that in mind. And let, we're going to ignore every bit of that this morning, all right? Um, look, Angie's like, oh, I need to hear all this turned over. I already knew this was going to be like this. Okay? Now, watch. All right, here's another question, Angie. Angie, I'm excited. All right. When do you think most people turn away from God? Elementary school, middle school, high school, or college? I'd say high school. 
You'd say high school? Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. It is. So most parents, watch this. Most parents, they go to church and they say, hey, preacher, preacher, my kid's doing this. What do I tell them? My kid's doing this. How do I parent them better? My kid this, my kid that. Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? I got the answer for what that is. But wait, okay, let me back up. Let me read you my notes. The reason our children are turning from their faith in middle school and high school is that we expected the church to teach our children the answers to hard questions. And they didn't. Okay? And this is nothing against church this morning. I think you better get up. You better you better get up. You better go on Sunday and you better go on Wednesday. But please do not rely on the church to teach your children the important answers. The reason, okay, that children are leaving their faith, the reason that people are, are going away from God is because when people ask them the hard questions... They have no idea how to answer. We are unprepared and we haven't prepared our children. Because we don't know how to answer those questions. So what is the reason why people are, are, are departing from their faith? A lack of teaching apologetics. Ooh. I know. Like, I know. Like, a lack of teaching apologetics. Nobody knows how to answer the hard questions. See, mine was, if you do that, you're going to hell. What? That's that was the the answer to the oh question. yeah to all the questions You're like going to hell to yes nobody wanted to tell you and see here's another problem in church let's say Sunday school okay again we're not we're not discrediting church that's not what we're doing you need a church home go to church I have a church home I love my church okay but in Sunday school. Instead of teaching us the reality of evil and darkness and the answer to these hard questions, they're teaching us about an art that had cute animals on it, and that's not how it looked. Mm -mm. They're teaching us false re they're teaching our children false realities of what it really looked like. Yeah. When you go pick up a book about Noah's Ark, it's got a pretty rainbow on it, and it's got cute little animals. Mm hmm. That's not what it looked like. And that wasn't even the whole point of the ark. No, it wasn't. The whole point of the ark was it saved Noah. Like, listen, it, oh, gosh, okay. So, but we've relied, listen, so Sunday and Wednesday teaching isn't enough, okay? We're not teaching the answers to complex questions. Is your child, if somebody came up to your child today, if somebody came up to you today and said... <sighs> How do you know the Bible is true? Are you going to feel prepared and ready, Freddy, to answer that call, to answer that question? Or are you going to be like, oh, well, they say so. And then, are you going to know how to answer? And, and answer in not yelling or being mad that they ask you the question, but saying, hey, I'm prepared for this moment. I know exactly how to answer this question. Let's talk about this. Because listen, the point, the point of apologetics isn't to win the argument. The point of apologetics is to defend, okay, your faith, which is what we're called to do in First Peter, okay? And I'm gonna, listen, it's good, okay? Um, it's what we're called to do, but we're called to do it with humbleness and fear of God, okay, and love. So you don't do it to be right. You do it to maybe spark the curiosity in somebody's mind, okay, so that you can help them understand so that they'll stick with God and choose God and know they can trust God. Okay, now I want to I want to show you something. This is where we see Genesis 3. It only took the third book of the Bible. The very first thing that God did was turn darkness into light in Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 3, all Satan had to do was make Eve doubt what God had already said. Now, I bet you've been taught that before, especially if you've been here with me because I've taught about it. But I need to say it again. I need you to hear it. What did Satan have to do? What was the only thing Satan had to do to make Eve sin and turn away from God? Make her doubt. Make her doubt. When somebody is asking your children or you the hard questions, what are they making you do? And you're not able to answer them. You're not equipped to answer them. You have no idea how to how to give them the answers that they're asking the questions to. What happens? There's doubt. There's doubt. Oh. 
Man. You see what I was up? Yeah. Like, all he has to do is make you doubt. And you're not understanding the strength, let's say, or the hold that doubt has on you and your children. Most people, most children, the reason that they turn away is because when their friends ask them a question, they don't know how to answer it, and it plants doubt in their mind that it's real. And that gives the devil a foothold. And that gives the devil a foothold. Oh, my goodness. He, all he's got to do is plant doubt. That's okay. It's good, ain't it? It's all he had to do. And that's what he is still doing today. You think, you know, that he, that is what he is still doing today. All he's got to do is plant doubt in our children's mind. If our children don't know how to answer the questions, I have no idea. Like, I'm over here like, man, we're failing our kids. We're telling the church to teach them. We're going to the church for answers. Listen, if the church don't know the answer, find it for your children's sake. Otherwise, when their friends start asking them, hey, you know, how is this trustworthy? How do you know this happened? How do you know this? And how do you know that? They'll be able to answer. If you don't know the answer, if you're not able to teach your kids, they are more likely to doubt. They're more likely to doubt. Oh, you're cute. Oh, yeah, with the little bun in the back. Show them your ear. I did it all by myself. I comb my hair now. Go clean your ears, too. Clean your earrings. Get dressed for the Can day. The little hoops in? No, let's not. Let's keep what they are today and clean them. Tomorrow we'll change them. In. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. I got to I gotta get my hair up. Okay. Quit relying on somebody else to teach your children the answer to hard questions. Get the answers, friend. Look up the answers. Study the study the questions. Like there is answers to every bit of this. You just need to study them. You just need to study them. We're in Genesis three. We are in danger of losing our kids and our kids losing their belief in God if we do not start teaching them the hard question. Because all they have to do is plant doubt. All people have to do is ask questions that they don't know the answer to and doubt is planted. And then they are doubting that God is even real in the existence. You know, they say that, you know, it does say in the word that bring, teach them the word. Uh -huh. Teach them the way to go. And, and they'll they come older. back. Mm -hmm. But why are they having to return? Because they didn't, they don't know the answer. Exactly. If you have them equipped for life, then they never leave. Well, I... Mm, I don't know about that because sometimes they just get wild hair and they just going off Granted. on a whim. But Granted. they will come back. Like that's the promise is but, that they will come back. But if they were more prepared in the beginning, there's a less chance of them falling off path. Right. Like, yeah. Because if I'd have got the right answers, because I was one of those. Mm. Well, you kind of have the right answers. Um, uh, uh, the first question, I mean, that's that's a good explanation. It's explaining, and we'll go into these questions. I don't know if we'll get to get to them today, but I kind of do want to do a series on them. I used to have some really hard questions. Well, I want to. I want to do a series on how to answer some of these questions because I'm telling you that you need to know them. Um, it was just confirmation to me because. I have known that I love apologetics, and I have known that it's one of my favorite areas of study, and I have often thought, well, I don't really, no, nah, I'm good, um, but I'm going to go back to school and get a master's degree, and they asked me if I wanted biblical studies or apologetics, and I wasn't sure. I'm, I'm now 100% sure, because I, the way that God gave me the skills and the ability to teach the way that I teach so that I can help people understand what apologetics is and say it in a way that people actually get it. Because let's be honest about this. I've listened to certain people teach apologetics and I'm like, you know, what did they say? That don't make no sense. Y'all ever done that? Y'all listen to somebody and I'm like, what did they say? I don't really feel like I got an answer to that. You know what I mean? So, he gave me the ability to teach the way that I do so that I can, for lack of better words, apologetics for dummies. <laughs> like, like, for lack of really, though, like, that is because 
I don't do big words. Like, y'all know that. I'm dyslexic. I can barely read them. I need things brought down into the dumbest possible form for me to be able to understand. I mean, really, it's the, we're just trying to over overcomplicate things. So, anywho, um, this is totally confirmation for me, and I just, I love it. And I also wrote down, we need to prepare our homes and children's to base their lives on the Word of God and defend why they do so. We need to be able to equip our children that when they get to middle school and high school, and see, a lot of us don't even start teaching our kids these concepts until middle school or high school because we think, oh, they don't know it. They don't need to know it in elementary school. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. You're not giving them enough credit. If I brought my son in here right now, my son is in elementary school. He is in fourth grade. Um, if I brought my son in here right now, he could tell you all about the enemy. He could tell you what his position was before he became the enemy. Do what? Yeah, I can. Yeah, you can. Like, he can tell you all kinds of things about the Bible that you didn't even know. They do need to know in elementary school. If you wait until there is a problem to teach them, you've got a problem. Because they're less likely to hear you. They're less likely to listen to you. The older they get, the more the children want to go up on their own. Teach them in elementary school. Because if you don't do that, they're not going to know how to defend their faith. And they need to know how. And defending their faith, that is what apologetics is. Again, let's make this so clear. It's not to argue with somebody. They won't be going into these conversations to argue with somebody. They're going into it to say, hey, this is the reason I believe what I believe. And I'm going to stand firm in that because I believe God and I believe his word. And I believe everything that he has ever promised me or given me. And I'm not wavering on that. That's what it says. It isn't meant for your child to convince the other person. It is simply meant that when, we're getting ready to get to it, that when the wind blows and the storms come, your kids have a firm foundation. Now let's get into that. Watch this. I want to say this first. It's not the school's responsibility. It's not um, the church's responsibility. It is your responsibility to teach your child. It's yours. You were gifted that child. God seemed fit to give you that child. Okay? It is nobody else's responsibility but yours. Okay? Now, I love y'all. So... I'm going to help you. Like that, that is 100% without a doubt the reason that I'm who I am and why I'm where I am. And I mean, I just, it all just is so clear to me now. Um, after last night, like I love teaching the Bible. I love it so much. But I also love the hard questions and answering them and equipping people to answer them. I'm going to fill the gaps. Where others have let you down because you may know your Bible, but you still don't know how to answer those hard questions. That is a problem. Because all the, what did we just learn? All the enemy has to do is plant a little bit of doubt. And if he can just plant a little bit of doubt, it can destroy everything because you don't know how to stand on it. Now, let me prove my point. Christianity was removed from the classroom, but watch this. This is, this is good, Angie. Watch it religion wasn't removed from the classroom. Christianity was. You're right. I know. Prayer was taken out of school. God was taken out of school. Uh, Bibles were taken after school. But it was simply placed with a godless religion. They still teach evolution. They still teach all kinds of things. Except for Christianity. Mm. Like, I'm not telling you to pull your kids out of public school. But I'm telling you that if you don't teach your kids how to defend their faith, when they get to science class or social studies or whatever, and they start learning about evolution and, and naturalism and this and that and this forth, okay, they're not going to understand how to defend what God said is. Because they simply took your Bible out of school, they took God out of school, and they took prayer out of school, but they didn't take religion out of school. They're still teaching it. 
So I'm not, I know that everybody can't homeschool. Yes. What do you need those for? Like, they did not. They didn't take religion out of schools. They t they they just took out Christianity and they left a godless religion. I'm not telling you to pull your kids out of public school. What I'm telling you is you need to teach you. If your child is still in public school, then you need to work harder than ever so that your kid can make a difference in a school system that doesn't want him there. Okay? Anywhere that doesn't want him. Even if we're just not talking about schools. There are nurses being fired because they talk about God to somebody who's dying on their deathbed. Or even talking about God, period. Nurses are being fired. Doctors. Like, I mean, you aren't even allowed to talk about God in any of these work environments. I was told I'd be fired to direct TV. If you talked about, yeah, if you talked about God to somebody on the phone. Yep. I did it anyway, but you know. Yeah, but you know, like, the Bible is banned in California. What? What? From where? Just for... uh, really? Mm -hmm. Uh, because the elite is bad. I think no. Is he elite? I'm, I'm sure he is. He's. he's <laughs> <also>. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. The, the person that leads uh, the state is Ken um, Name's Ken Jong. There's no yep. Bibles, no nothing. People live horrible there. They can't live. They can't leave, and no one has cars. They have to walk everywhere, and they don't even have SpongeBob. Oh no! See. <laughs> See? A they can't have SpongeBob. He's always right. I know. He's always right. He spits facts. Like, I mean. Fun facts. Fun All facts right. about everything. He's he's good. I tell him. You are too. Y'all both have very different Bible study skills. And they both serve amazing purposes. Because I, hey, I gave a speech at the conference. Right? And I included what you taught me and Angie. Didn't I, Angie? Yep. Sure did. Brought you up in front of all those people. It was actually the basis of it my was, teaching. It was the basis of my teaching is what my daughter taught me. Mm. Mm. I love it. Like, can your kids do that? And if they can't, you haven't failed as a parent. Please don't think that. Don't. You haven't failed. It's not too late. But friends, if your kids are still going to public school, then you better even more teach these children how to answer the hard questions so that they can be a, a light in others' lives. Okay? Um, that's wild. Okay, now watch this. Psalms 11.3 says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation is messed up the moment our children have no idea how to defend the first book of the Bible. The flood, Adam and Eve, creation, and etc. Genesis is the foundation for the whole book in the Bible. And if we go read Matthew 7, 24 through 27, let's go, let's, let's do that. Watch this. It's excited. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone who hears the, these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock, a firm foundation. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house in the sand. When the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was the fall. If we build our if we build our faith on the firm foundation that God is over everything that and we give our kids the 
instruction and the tactics to be able to defend their faith, their foundation is already made firm. But the moment that they have no idea how to answer a hard question, when the winds blow, when and it beats on a house, okay, and when when bad things, well, when things are hitting them, when people are saying, well, how did this come about? Well, how did this come about? And how do you know that God is real? How do you know the Bible is true? How do you know this? And how do you know that? When they don't know the answer, that is the winds that are coming and blowing, and it's blowing the foundation away. It blows the house down because the foundation wasn't firm. It wasn't firm. Genesis is the foundation for the whole Bible. And if you are not teaching your children the reality of the truth of the Bible, how in the world are they going to stand on the firm foundation of God's word against a world who wants to throw it out completely? Are you helping your children form a firm foundation? Are you giving your kids the the tactics, the the uh, the ability? Right? Are you teaching your children the things that they need to be able to to or, or the the how do I say? Are you giving your children the resources to be able to answer these hard questions? I want to just ponder here. Um, raise raise your hand in the comments if you feel like this is you, okay? How many of you don't even, as parents, don't have a clue how to answer those questions? Raise your hand in the comments. Just curious. Don't have a clue. I mean, look at that. Even to teach my friends. Yes, teaching your friends. Yes, like... This is for anybody, okay? If somebody asked you hard questions about faith, do you know how you would answer them? Raise your hand if you have no idea. If anybody asked you that. It's hard. I mean, you did pretty good. I, I, but I, around here. I know. <laughs> That's your advantage. Like, that is your advantage because I'll be like, let me teach y'all something. I mean, I will go through this house teaching my whole family something. I can't even, if it sparks my interest, I'm going, the whole house is going to learn about it because I'm going to go to each individual person and prove my point over and over again. It's so funny. Like, I just get too excited. Um, but it's hard, ain't it? It's hard. Now, I'm going to ask you another question, okay? Throw up a different emoji uh, in the chat, okay? Uh, any, any other emoji, just a different one than a hand one. How many of you was raised in church, Sunday school, all the things, and still don't know how to answer these questions? When I was growing up, we were basically discouraged from asking those questions because we'll find out when we get to heaven. Right. And some of the answers are like you just, you don't need to know all the answers. We have to be okay with not knowing the fullness of a lot of answers. But if we can't answer, how do we expect somebody to believe in what we're 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 saying we say i believe in god why but because because he's the lord right it's not good enough for some people and that's not gonna it's not it's it's not gonna feel a child's mind instead of saying it's just just because right it's gonna flood a child when child gets to school they're gonna be like well i'm doubting and what did we learn from genesis 3 it only takes what Doubt. To plant anything the enemy wants to plant. 
gets a foothold. Yeah. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. So if Adam and Eve fell for it, then you don't think you will? You don't think your kids will? Do you have something you want to say or are you just being near me? Just being near you, but as a, a younger, like, teenager, uh -huh. I remember my dad coming up with, with one saying if Adam and Eve and all were real, then where did Cain and Abel's wives come from? That's one of them. Yep, that's one of the hard questions. Well, I just learned that answer recently. Yep. And I was a little shook. Yeah. Hold on, baby. Daddy's trying to say something. If you, You're going to have to. If you do it as a family. Yes. Seek the answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, can I show y'all something? I love that he brought that up. Emma, <coughs> can you hand me that blue book right there beside of your Bible? Uh, uh, yep. Perfect. One of them is, yeah. I write in it for you. Um, this was, who did, Haley, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so my son loves science, okay, but he, he loves too. God. Yes. She bought this for both of the kids, and um, we've done a couple of them, but do these, th it's this simple, friends. Um, when y'all sit down at the dinner table, Read a Bible. Read, read a book like this. Yeah. Like, this is a hundred incredible devotions about God and science. Um, okay, let me jump to the let me jump to the bottom of my notes. I don't care what anybody says. Science doesn't trump scripture. Actually, many have tried to set science against scripture. But truth is, science has never disproved one thing about the Bible. It never has. Not one. There was actually a scientist, uh, it was a little boy, actually, who went up against scientists, and he proved the Bible was real using their own science. Yeah. Yeah, and it, Scripture always speaks with what? What is scripture? Scripture is the inspired word of God. Right. Which God has all authority. Right. Okay. So scripture always speaks with authority. Yeah. It never disproves. This is the book. Um, How Great Is Our God? A Hundred Incredible Devotions About God and Science. One of the first ones we read was about the Goldilocks effect. And how... Every single one of the planets are all perfectly aligned. And if any of them were just a smidge off, we couldn't live here on Earth. It's called the Goldilocks effect. Everything is perfectly in line. Everything is just It's right. just right. Because if it wasn't like that, we couldn't live here. You love this guy's books? I've never read any of it, but this, but it's good. But these are answering hard questions. And, I mean, in a kid's form, like stormy weather. Um, Job actually teaches us how it teaches us that lightning comes before the thunder, even though it seems the other way around. I think um, it's really not, and even Job knew that. Why are you looking at me like that? We studied that. Yeah, this is why I've been paying attention, but oh, my goodness. Yeah, Job proves that. If you scroll back far enough in the Facebook group, I talked about it. I mean, I could be, I could have got it backwards, but um, whichever one you think. So, is it light travels faster than um, sound? Uh-huh. So, that's the reason that you see one first other than the other, but it's actually backwards. And Job knew that. when In one of his scriptures, he literally wrote that you hear that you do this first, then this. And, yep, it's pretty cool. <coughs> Um, the name of this book here, well, I'm sorry, y'all can't even read it. How Great Is Our God? Will you type this in the chat um, and who wrote it so that they can find it? Um, my Facebook group is Purpose, I Hope, and um, I share like a lot about what we're doing in our business stuff, but I also share Bible tips. Um, okay. I love that, though. Science has never disproved Scripture. And another really fun fun fact, people who believe in the Big Bang, you can't prove that either. 
So everything that they're basing their belief on also can't be proven. So, you know, they're in the same position. They just like to word their questions differently. But they're in the exact same position. Um, it's pretty good. Science is study of God's creation. Yes. Uh, young living oils, uh, essential oils are wonderful for your body. They are wonderful for your body. I love essential oils. Um, essential oils are not evil. I mean, it's just like the rock that was used in Cain and Abel. The rock wasn't evil. It was how it got used. That that made it bad. Oils are the same thing. Is Anything in life is the same thing. It's how you use them. Um, but items are neither good nor bad. It's how you choose to use those items. And your heart posture when you do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I bought all those Young Living oils a long time ago. But Young Living is also one of the only companies that... Um, gives oils that are digestible that you can actually put in your water and stuff but yeah i i love doTERRA i do now prefer doTERRA over young living i have lots of doTERRA oils um these are all like super old i used to really be into all of them and now i'm just into the basic ones peppermint lavender lemon um Frankincense is actually really good, but it stinks. Um, but then a couple of other ones. But doTERRA is like my go-to now. Much more affordable. Um, just my preferred preference. Yay. You use both? Yeah, see, I do too. And uh, quick now. I will, I think I'll continue to do that. Evil within the company. There's evil within all companies, um, if you're being honest. I mean, you still shop at Walmart. And, and you know what? Actually, something I was studying last night, didn't put it on here. Um, most Christian colleges that claim, do you know, okay, fun fact, again, Harvard and Yale used to be big Christian colleges. And they were ran by, like, the president of those were only, like, pastors, ministers, reverends, all that. The minute that they compromised and let somebody in that wasn't a pastor, a minister, or anybody in authority, so to say, uh, as far as teaching scripture goes, is when it all went downhill and Christianity started being removed. So, I think even with every company, you will find something that's just not good. Um, granted, I don't buy a lot of Young Living. I don't buy a lot of nothing. I don't really spend a lot of money. But I don't think that you need to, uh, like, no matter if you shop at Walmart, I can promise you that some scandalous stuff is happening up the line. I mean, that can be What's promised it? with every one of them. Liberty University is a renowned Christian college. Yep. There has been a lot of controversy on how they run their college. Mm-hmm. Anything that that has got involved, they're going yeah. to find something wrong with it to try yeah. to bring it down. Yeah, that's also true. Um, also, though, too, it's like, um, it's also, too, though, it is, um, yeah. stop! It is, uh, you know, what are the, we don't honestly know the real requirements to hire the professors, Right? <laughs> So, do we test their knowledge and their beliefs before we give them the job? Probably not. And in the instance that they don't do that, you'll have professors in there that are teaching things that are completely absurd. But if we don't um, seek, you know, the way that they are, the way that they teach or what their beliefs are, then corruption is easily going to fall in. You know what I mean? So... You leaving? Okay. Oscar, lay down before you get in trouble. Okay. Um, here's, and this is good because um, 
You can't answer how to answer all these questions. I'm not here to answer the questions today. I'm here to tell you what the problem is because this is going to be just a complete series of answering different questions. Um, as far as answering the one about how you know God exists, Angie did a really good job as far as saying when the Bible says in the beginning, it's talking about our beginning. That is when time was created. God is the creator of time, not limited to it. If I create something, I'm not limited within the time space of what I created. I'm over it. I'm authority over it. God is authority over us. He's not limited to our times of fear. He's not limited to the what he created. Okay. And that is, and that is what, um, he is the creator, not something that is created. So it is, uh, that's, that's your answer. I mean, it's super, it's, he's not limited by the things that we are limited by because he is greater than us and he created the world. The time did not start until God said in the beginning. And then we talk to put God in a box. Uh huh. That's putting God in a box. But it, the, the first, let's see the first words of the Bible. So every word in the Bible, uh, which something that I don't study a lot of, but I should really study more of is words in the Bible. Um, but they were all written in Hebrew, Greek, and some Arabic, right? Um, geez. If you will look up those translations, so it says, in the beginning, God, okay? In a Hebrew Bible, it says another word other than God, okay? It's, I don't know how to say it. It's like E-L, something, 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 something. I'll have to, I'll have to get my Dead Sea Scrolls. Do what? Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Yep. And if you break that word down, it's showing his authority. So at the very beginning, he said in the beginning, so that was the beginning of time, God, and that one word, okay, talks about who God is and how he has authority over all. All you got to do is break the word down. Ain't that good? It's really good. But he immediately told his authority over everybody. Immediately. Ain't that good? I mean, I'm saying so. Let me get to my last point. We don't know. Now, this goes to what we're talking about as far as, like, the universities and stuff. Um, and, like, evil being within different companies. We don't know how to stand in our faith. So, we compromised it instead. You don't know how to answer the hard questions. So, instead, you just fall into the crowd. Ain't that good? That's hard stuff, but it's truth. When you don't know how to answer the hard questions, you just start falling in with the belief of what everybody else is saying. Like, like marriage being between uh, a woman and a man. You don't know how to explain that to somebody. So, instead, you just fall in with saying, it's okay if it's not like that. And that's not how God created it to be. Right? So, what did we do? We gave up on the fight. We gave up on the ability to defend our faith and instead just started saying, I'll compromise it a little bit. I'll compromise it just a little bit because, because I don't know how to answer that question that they asked me. So I'll just compromise it a little bit and I'll tell them that, you know, uh, all is well. All is well anyway. It's not well when it's planting doubt in people's minds. And if you fall in with the compromises that the world is trying to, to undergo with scripture, then all you're doing is creating more doubt. And doubt leads people away from God. Right? So it's, we decided we wanted to fit in and be liked, not stand outside with God. We decided that we don't know how to answer the hard questions. We don't really care to know how to answer the hard questions. We'll ask the hard questions, but will we seek for the answers? And in the instance that we don't and somebody asks us a question and we have no idea how to answer it, we're now compromising on our faith and we've planted doubt. Not only in others, but in ourselves. And Genesis 3 done proved it. It only takes a little bit of doubt. And the enemy done sneaks right on in. All throughout scripture, 
We talked about it a couple weeks ago, Matthew chapter 4, um, when Satan tempted Jesus. All he had to, he was trying to plant doubt. He appealed to Jesus' hunger and eyes and pride, all that, right? He used his humanness to try to confuse him and create doubt. In Genesis 3, <clears throat> when she saw the tree was good for food, he appealed to her hunger and that it was delight to the eyes. He appealed to her humanly pleasure, humanly wants, and that the tree was desired to make one wise. He appealed to her desire to be more. Just like you did with Jesus. Just like you did with Jesus. So, if it only took to Genesis chapter 3 and of the gospel, Matthew chapter 4. I think we need to get better at answering some questions. I'm just saying. God's word has always been under attack. Genesis 3, Matthew 4. All Satan had to do was cause Eve to doubt. We give up on the authority of Scripture. We don't know how to answer the question, so we just roll with it, for lack of better words. We will go out of our way to trust man rather than God. We meet the world halfway when we stand with the world and with God. We can't do both without being lukewarm. Yes. And what does the Bible say about lukewarm? Do what? Spit out. Do what? Can't serve two masters. Mm -hmm. Being lukewarm, you get spit out. Yep. So, uh, as I continue studying and whatnot, I am going to uh, do videos to help, like, explain it and dumb it down. Um, because that's how I need stuff taught to me. I need it dumbed all the way down. I mean, all the way. Really. Like, I need it simple words, dumbed down, all the way. Help me answer it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I need. So that's what I'm going to provide with people. God willing, God give me the ability to understand so that I can teach your people in the dumbest way possible because it appeals to me. Okay? I feel like if I make it that easy for you to get, you'll be able to defend your faith. Right? Just good, huh? Like... I know I didn't get into answering the questions today, but today I just wanted you to understand why it's important and what doubt can do to you and your children and your family and your friends. I needed to get that point across. I need you to understand that if we don't build ourselves on a firm foundation to answer hard questions, we're going to get lured off of the path by doubt, which is of the enemy. Same. Listen, Bible for dummies. Listen, I got you. Listen, I also wrote this note down, so I just want to read it. God has a plan for me, but the enemy will try to distract me, guide me away, convince me that God is holding out on me, and none of that is true. Sin often may look good and desirable, but it isn't. What it gives you will only last a moment. The consequence will last forever. It's good. What? That's what he's scored off of you. Oh. Steve messed with me too. Yeah, me to in. get built on that firm foundation, most definitely read and study. Um, most definitely. People ask me, Kelsey, how, how did you become so knowledge? I read the Bible and studied. That's it. I found good teachers um, that helped me along the way. And then kind of, sort of. But really, I just seeked the Lord. I sought the Lord. He heard me answered. Like, I mean, that's in a song. It's not just a song. It's a song. And... I, that's what I did. And then I set out to become the teacher that I needed, which is a teacher who will dumb things down. A teacher who will go verse by verse with me and help me understand. A teacher who will who will make it so simple for me to understand so that I can build a firm foundation with God. Because if I don't have somebody to make it that simple for me, I'm never going to be able to get there. 
because I need it to be that simple. If you don't stop it, I need it to be that simple. Lord, you got one doing that one. Lay down. He's so grumpy. Um, how do you read the Bible and study it? I have lots of videos on that, but it looks a lot like this. But I have lots of videos on it. Like, I, I do coffee talks here uh, every Monday, Thursday, and Friday uh, at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I have a mentorship where I, where I create these resources for people so that they'll have them. Um, but, my friends... Uh, not only, well, we're going to go ahead and start digging into these things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start learning these things and building a reference to be able to teach people these things. But um, I am super excited that I will, in fact, be going back to school um, to get a master's in apologetics. Open the door like that door and put him outside the door. Whoa. Okay, my goodness. He was like, he's going to get mad that you didn't come with him and he's going to open the door. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> That's funny. Steve said to remind you of the meeting with the newspaper dude at 930. But I have Zoom at 930. Oh, you do. Oh, yeah. oh that's great. I'll have to I call him about it. Yep. Um, can this be a part of our kids night? Um. Yeah, we can go over like different things about God in our kids' night. That's really that'd be really cool. I like that, Adrian. That's a good idea. Like teaching kids different answers to hard questions. I really like that. In our mentorship, uh, we we have a kids' night where I'm gonna let the kids come on, um, and. Uh, Give them a lesson of sorts so that I can help the parents teach their children. Um, thank you so much. Y'all are so sweet. The membership's 25. Um, I create resources to help you study your word. You get access to a digital download for every single chapter that we read. We pick a book and we go verse by verse through the whole book. Um, we do three Zooms a week. We And they're all recorded so you can watch later. There's tons of fellowship. There's things we do together as a family for fellowship. Um, there's kids nights. There's couples nights. Um, I put a lot of effort, work, and time into my mentorship to make sure that people are getting effectively taught um, the hard questions and the answers to the Bible, not just the main pictures. We read Genesis chapter 3 this morning and we talked about how we need to be answering the hard questions. I just thought that was so good. Like, and I wrote all this, or I typed it all out actually um, because I couldn't write quick enough to write it all, so I typed it all. Um, here's what I wrote down for who created God and where did he come from, which I got to write down a lot more. So, like, this was just my, this is, like, my final thing. Um, I got to write down a lot more because I've done a lot more studying and I just didn't, I didn't have time to type it all out before I really needed to go to bed. Um, but I put, God is greater than us, so he doesn't have to prove himself to us. Do we prove ourselves to our children or something we created? No. God is all-knowing, Colossians 2, 3, and doesn't have to please us because we are created and he is the creator. He has no obligation to please us or satisfy our needs or wants. He doesn't have to satisfy us like that, but he tells us that he will. He tells us that if we have a need, he will give it to us. But he is outside of time space. So he isn't limited by the things we are limited by. You know, and I want to talk about it. Let's say this too before I... Before um. We are doing the Apologetics to the Genesis Project Church. I love that, Ashley. I love that so much. I think more churches should do that. I think so many more churches should do that. Um, let's think about it like this. 
I can go in my store that I have on Main Street and I can grab any product I want off the shelf and I can leave with it. Why? It's mine. It's mine. I put everything in that store and I can take everything out of it if I want to. Right? Like it's mine. Ain't it, God is the same way. Who's here? Ethan. Ethan. Emma, what are you doing? You're not going to the party. You're in here. I know, but what the teacher said we could bring these. Like, okay. I don't care about that, but okay, y'all are going to be late. Okay. I don't know what I was saying. Oh. God is the same way. He created everything within the world so he can give and he can take. And that's exactly what Job says too. I also read something else. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but um, I really, really loved this too. A lot of people that ask, how do they know the Bible is true? There's a lot of components to it. And I'm sure we'll go over it later. But my favorite thing that, that I learned was that there was 66 books in the Bible. All was written at a different time by a different person in a completely different place. Right? Mm -hmm. They didn't even know each other. Right. And yet they aligned perfectly. And it all pointed to Jesus. And it all pointed to Jesus. They all said the same thing. They all said there is over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament that points to Jesus. And Jesus fulfilled all 300. Yeah, he did. All 300. And the probability of him doing that was hardly anything. Nobody could do that unless he was Jesus. Right. Like, a lot of, and a lot of people also like to use, like, well, it was copied over and over by a whole bunch of different people. So, how do you know that it's true? All the manuscripts that have ever been found, the only thing that made them different was... There were 16 things that made them different. And it was all simply the way the language was wrote. It didn't have to do, the words were not different. It was the letters. It was the lines and the marks. That's the only thing. Yeah. That's it. That's it. The accents. The, the words. Yeah, the accents. The words all lined up. All the manuscripts that have ever been found, they all align. That is crazy. If you, I mean, I will even say this. If I wrote something down on a piece of paper and I said, here, Angie, write this down. She's going to change it. And then Angie hands it to somebody. Here, write this down. They're also going to change it, especially if you're handwriting it. Because it's a lot to handwrite. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to shorten it. If I tell you a story and you go tell her a story and then she goes and tells a story and then she goes and tells a story. That story is so different. By the time it gets to where it's going. Yep. But this was not the case with the manuscripts of the Bible. They lined up. That is 100% proof right there. They lined up. Um, I do have the Apocrypha. Um, we can get to that a whole other day because there are books. People like to say that too. Well, what about the books that are y'all taking out of the Bible? So we'll talk about that too. Yes, I love it, Adrian. I have no idea who that is. Chuck something another. I don't I don't know who that is. Oh, I even forgot his book bag. I love that, Ashley. Um, I will be working on it this week. Homeschool Master Books has great resources. Stephanie, I love that. I'll have to look that up. I ain't even homeschooling my kids, so to say. There's just way too much evidence. There is.
again, that is another question for another day, but we will get we will get to it. I know, yeah, I'll look him up. Now I do love me some Ken Ham. Sometimes it be like that, girlfriend. Up and down. It just be like that. I love that so much. I love that too. I agree. The air in my lungs right now, no denying you is real. Scripture says that if even if you just look around in creation, you'll see God everywhere. You'll see God everywhere. I'll have to look into that, Stephanie. I love stuff like that. Clearly. I'm really excited about... Uh, my plan is to go back to school. I'll get my a master's in apologetics in a year. Because I already have the bachelor's and stuff. And then I want to get a doctorate in biblical studies and ministry. It's called a doctorate in ministry. People can doubt because Satan plants the doubt. And if we don't have efficient answers then the doubt continues to build and build and build. And that is the enemy's way of confusing God's creation. It's as simple as that because he done it in Genesis 3 and he tried again in Matthew 4 with Jesus and he done it all through a, throughout the Bible. He done it with the Israelites in Exodus uh, when he made them doubt that God knew what was best or when they were in the wilderness and they started doubting God. All throughout the Bible, when you see people fearing and not following after God it is because they started to doubt Um even in the book of Ruth, Naomi and her husband, they moved their family outside of God's will because they got worried and doubted about a famine. Abraham done the same thing. And we know that Abraham is like the basis for everything, right? But he doubted God's ability and worried over a famine and then ended up lying and telling the, the Pharaoh that, that um, his wife was really his sister and it caused a whole bunch of ruckus. And he walked right outside the will of God. But then he got to come back. He, he came back in, right? But all throughout scripture, you will find doubt presented an opportunity for the enemy to discourage God's people. I don't want to be a pastor, no. It's not my plan. I just want, I want to write books. Um, I want to write books and I want to be able to, uh, I just want to be able to do whatever God calls me to do, really. Like, that's what I'm here for. Um, I want to go back to school to get the credentials that I may, in fact, need one day um, to walk into a position that God calls me to. And right now, I definitely, um, I've put it off for a very long time and didn't want to do it. And he has put it on my heart that I, in fact, need to do it. And so I'm going to. And I have no idea how God's going to use it, but I'm just going to be here for it. And um, I have no desire to be a pastor. I just want to write books and teach people. And um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about being able to be a college professor when it's over, to be honest with you. <laughs> I like love that idea, um, but I have no idea where God's going to call me. I just want to be prepared and ready when he does. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Yes, you can ask a question. My beliefs as far as women preaching, I think people don't, um, I think that when you're studying that, you should really consider the cultural of the time. You should understand what is being applied. Um, 
and how Paul is saying the things he is saying. But he isn't saying that women can't go out and teach people. That isn't what he's saying. And um, a lot context. of people use the defense. A lot of people use the defense that uh, women shouldn't be head of man. Okay, women will never be head of man because I know that um, Eve came from Adam's rib. Okay, we know that. We know that man came first and then woman came. But we also know that perfect balance was created when no other man could come besides from a woman. So because you can't have any other children in this world without having a woman and a man together okay so and a woman has to carry and deliver the children so that is god's way of creating perfect balance and if you read in romans you will understand that um there was a man and a woman who both let they were married and they led a church in their home um mary was the very first person to ever he said go out and tell the disciples she was the very first person to ever deliver the gospel message so i don't think it's being head over anything i don't think um people look at a pastor as being the head over a church i look at it as they're the face of the church because I'm, i don't ever feel to be head over anybody me and my husband bring um we both love to study the Bible, and he has his way of doing it, and I have mine. And when we bring together those two abilities to study, we can reach so many people. So instead of thinking of it as one is ahead and one is below, um, we don't see it like that because we were all made equal through Christ. That also says that in Romans, and it says that women and men um, were made equal to stand beside of each other. So, I love that. I feel that simply by doing what God created us to do makes us all teachers. I love that. Adrian's got a good point. Women can teach you in school, so why can't they teach you in church? I love it. Is our main, I feel like our main um, debate on women shouldn't preach is simply because it says that women shouldn't be head over man, right? Women shouldn't teach men. Um, we'll really break that down. What does that mean? I'm just, let's put that in the comments. Let's really break that down before we get off here. Women shouldn't teach men. What does that mean? Quit, Oscar. What does it mean that a woman shouldn't be able to teach men? So are you saying that women shouldn't be able to teach men how to manage money? Should women not be able to teach men how to do laundry or do the dishes? Should women not teach men um, life skills? I mean, I'm just question. I'm just asking. What? Why? What makes women not be able to teach men? And if you're saying that women shouldn't teach men in church because women aren't men are made to be the head, okay. What does that mean? I'm just gonna ask that question. What does that mean? Women aren't allowed to be the head. Well, women shouldn't teach men. Is this a revolving cycle? Do y'all see what I'm saying? It's women shouldn't teach men. Why? Because men are the head and women are not. Okay, so are you not allowed to teach your husband anything? I mean, I'm just pondering you a question. Do you do the bills at home? And if we're in the point of talking about um, what the roles of men and women, let me also ponder you this. Did you plan your wedding? Technically. Because in the old, Because in Old Testament biblical times, the man planned the wedding. Every bit of it. So, if we're not allowed to bring culture into it, which is what some will argue, then why are we allowed to bring culture into the uh, marriage aspect of it? Because men actually planned the wedding. Women didn't plan anything. They just waited to be picked up. 
So if we'll bring culture into that part, but not into the part about what the position of women is or through the ages, then I think we also have another problem proposed, don't we? So I'm just asking questions in hopes to get answers. Ain't that funny? Because that's what I've been talking about today. <laughs> Ain't that funny? It's pretty good, huh? I'm just saying. <laughs> but I mean, really, I'm asking the questions and nobody's offering me any solutions. I mean, let's just really define that. What does that look like? Because I don't feel that Another thing, and then we're going to get off here, okay? Most women lead worship. When we lead worship, aren't we teaching men how to worship? Yes, and most worship leaders are women. Our worship leader is a man at our church. He indeed is. He indeed is. He's great. But, I'm just saying. Yes. The hard truth is, if it wasn't for women, so many small churches would have closed over the years. Yes. That's good, Amanda. Perfect deception of the enemy to disqualify 50% of God's army. That's pretty good. Talking about good. like the women. Oof, mm -hmm. that's good. Yes, and it started with children coming to church. I love that. We are to lead our husbands by example. Also true. Men are men are the head of the household, but in the instance that they and head of the household means spiritually, not authority and mean and all that. Okay, there are, there are just lines, um, but, but, um, saying that the man is the head is showing us how to love our husbands, and our position in the Bible is showing our husbands how to love us, and that's the main teaching of that, is to show us how to live together in harmony. Hoosers. We are called to lead our husbands if they're not the leaders of the household. We are called to lead our husbands until they are willing to step up. But see, as women, we should humble ourselves enough to also know that if our husbands are not in the position that God called them to be, we should be their biggest supporter to get them to the position that God has called them to be. And I firmly believe that. We all should tell the world about Jesus. That's literally all we're called to do. That is literally the will of God for his people to go out and tell about him. It's literally the will of God. All right, my friends. I love y'all so much. I hope y'all have a great day. I'm going to, um, I'll post my notes from this in the membership, friends. Um, so that y'all can print it out and at least have it. Maybe put it in your binder or something. I think when I start typing stuff out like that, I'm just going to kind of create a spot to just share it in the membership so that you guys can kind of like follow along. God is so good. He's so good. Lord, thank you for being good. All right. Membership people, mentorship people, I'm going to see you at 930. Stephen, I'm about to call you because we got a problem. We got conflict and problem. Okay. Um, but I love you guys so big. I hope y'all have a great rest of the day. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. for another coffee talk. And I will see my mentorship people at 930. I love you guys so big. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys.